Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, folks. Michael Zuber, one rental at a time, back with the CEO of Hemlane. How are you doing, Dana? I'm great. Thanks for having me, Michael. Hey, one of the things we try to do each show, which we do every other Thursday, is give people a taste of what Hemline, the platform, brings, how they can use the trial. Uh, and today we're actually going to do, you know, some revenue generating activities. We're going to talk about how to input rent. Do you want to give us a quick peek on how to do that? Yeah, let me show you that. Um, so uh, just to kind of give a quick overview of Hemlane, um, we are an all-in-one property management platform doing everything from finding and placing a tenant, a qualified tenant, um, because we do the background and credit check all the way to the day-to-day -day management from rent collection, repair coordination, et cetera. Your tasks up here will tell you exactly what your next steps are to do. Um, and one of them might be to set up rent collection. Um, so I'm gonna go through it and um, just give you some kind of tips and tricks on um, whether it's our platform you use or any other one you use of how to think about rent collection and um, how to make sure you set yourself up for success. Um, sometimes, uh, or a lot of times actually, I see small mom and pop landlords using Venmo for rent collection. Yeah. Some to the point where it's like a $2,000 limit and they tell their tenants, you have to send me two requests oh. because it like hits the limit. And it's just like, wait a second. Yeah. Um, tenants can dispute that if that's a consumer app. Um, just not a great way to do anything um, or to do uh, rent collection. And so you really want an automated system with best in class practices set up. So when I go ahead and um, click request money here, I can request money. I can also send money to tenants to a leasing agent um, for repairs, anything like that. Um, so we're here. When you send money to a tenant, it's like a refund of a security deposit. But yeah. most times you're gonna click this request money and we wanna set it up. Um, so here we are at 123 Zuber Road. Yeah. And I have a pending tenant who hasn't moved in yet, but her name's Bonnie. And um, I'm just gonna set her up here and um, select which bank account. So if I have multiple LLCs or different, each property has a different bank account. I can yep. select which one it is here. You can have unlimited that you set up. Why did my computer just freeze? There we go. Um, and go through and then select the category of rent. If I already have something populated in there, it's automatically going to just say $2,000 in rent. Awesome. If that's the monthly rent, um, it does that. You can also put a memo here. Um, anything in there. Uh, you always want to select recurring for it because you want it to go every single month. And so you don't have to every month log in and request the rent. So I can say it's monthly. It's going to start April 1st, cancel upon move out. And it's all due on the first. You can also do weekly. Um, oh. I hear this question a lot about payment plans and hey, my tenant, if I wait 30 days um, for to get the rent and they get paid every week, um, you know, maybe they've spent that on something else. And so maybe you can go through and um, help them kind of do their budgeting and yeah. financing. You would want that obviously put into the lease agreement as well, because you want Hemlane to mirror your lease agreement. Um, but I've actually had, I had someone come up to me um, yesterday and, and ask about that as well. So you do have that option and then you can choose when it's due. And so 15th of the month, first of the month, whatever. Okay. Um, but here's the part that um, is interesting with it. Um, allow partial payments and allow payments via debit and credit card is automatically not checked. And let me go through that. You can go ahead and highlight this in case you want to read all about it. Yeah. Um, but the reason it's not is because if you allow and accept partial payments, then you legally can't serve an, an eviction notice for that month if the yep. tenant doesn't pay the full amount. So let's say Bonnie owes $2,000 in monthly rent and she only pays $20. You have to wait until the next month in order to serve that notice. And so a lot of landlords say, it's great that Bonnie lives with a roommate, but let me tell you, it's gonna be the full amount someone <laughs> owes to us. We're not gonna split it. Yep. You do have roommates and you do wanna split it, you could check that box. We also do it with debit or credit. We say credit cards um, payments come with risk. Click here for more information. These are very easy for a tenant to dispute. If you've ever called your credit card company, you know how easy it is to say, I didn't, that charge wasn't mine. My credit yeah. card got stolen. Yep. Um, and so there's this, and then who pays that convenience fee? And then there's automatically include a late fee. If you have it in your lease here under tenants and leases, it will automatically populate. We have one time or daily. You can say when it starts and the amount. And then this must be paid before the rent in our system. Yes. So if they haven't paid rent by the fifth, because this is charged on the fifth, the fifth of the month, if it's after the fifth, you would choose the sixth, then it would populate a late fee and the tenant would have to pay that first before the rent. 
only takes one time where the tenant is late through that to realize, hey, rent is my number one priority. I'm going to make sure to always pay it. Yep. Um, so then this is setting it up. You'll see we've just rem reminded you that partial payments are not allowed, debit and credit not allowed here. You click request, an email goes out to them. You're all set. It's in the system. Say you made a mistake on it um, with it. You could just click, click edit and just very quickly edit the terms and then um, press save and it will go directly through. So you'll have that. You'll see that under your recurring here. So I can go ahead and um, filter for that property here. And I can just go ahead and see that directly here in the system. And then anytime you need to cancel it, view or edit it, you can do it directly from here. Here's a recurring tab. And then once it populates, um, let me just go to all properties because the ones for um, uh, these past months have populated, you'll be able to see it directly in here. And so you'll be able to see that transaction. Um, so it's a very quick overview um, of how um, rent collection is done in Hemlane. Um, what questions do you have? No, I, I just think that people need to spend more. A lot of people come to one rental at a time. I think they need to practice being a landlord. And one of the things you've given them at Hemlane, both the free PDF that's in my free course and the videos in the paid course is how to do that, right? Complete 30-day mm -hmm. guidance, do this, do that. Work with someone else. So folks, if you're interested in being a landlord, you don't own anything yet, I suggest getting the 30-day trial. And I, I want to say play, but learn, right? Learn the different things. Dig into this. Look at the questions. Look at why, right? Go to more details. Figure out why you don't take credit cards. Understand partial payments. There's so much information in here that will make you a better day-to-day -day operator. Uh, I think they just need to get in the system and play. So uh, where can they find it, Dana? Great. You can go to www.hemlane.com. H E M L A N E dot com and click try one month free and mention one rental at a time for 20% off your first year. Awesome. Thanks, Dana. Great. Thanks so much for having me. Mm -hmm.